since I mentioned Arthur Guptill's rendering in pen and ink book in my sketchbook tours so much, I thought I would give a little review of it as well. So I did several studies from his book and exercises like creating marks in pen and ink, drawing buildings. And I can tell you that as someone who's fairly new to pen and ink, reading his book really helped me with the medium. And I feel like my pen and ink sketches have improved just since reading this book. It's it's an older book. It's definitely a classic book. has been out for it has 60 editions. I love art supplies, and I absolutely love the little sketches of all of the art supplies that he suggests using. I think the book is so fun for that reason and um, includes things like bottle holders and how to keep your ink from spilling and all of that stuff, but it's actually really good practical information. And I learned about some art supplies that I had never heard of, I had never used, like an erasing shield. I ended up finding a vintage one off of Etsy because, I mean, if he says you need one, then like, let's go, let's go get it, right? (laughs) Basically, I'll buy all the books and art supplies and review them so that you don't have to buy them all. When it comes to the drawing, he has a lot of great information just about things from the angle that you're holding your pen uh, with your nibs, some information on that. I know a lot of people who do pen and ink now will use uh, little micron felt tip markers, and those are great because they're waterproof. They're easy to carry around. You don't have to worry about ink spilling or refilling the ink, that sort of thing. But there's something about drawing with a fountain pen. And if you get it, you get it. Like there's just something very tactile about it that I like. But it has a lot of great exercises on how to create certain looks. It focuses on values, which can be the hard thing in pen and ink. Some of the areas just end up, it just ends up looking like a big mess. And getting your values right is important, not only in painting, but also in grayscale. There's a whole section on architecture, which I was excited about. I love I love homes and decorating and I love drawing interiors. There's a lot about drawing trees and nature as well. And what I like about this as well is that a lot of different styles are represented. In some art books, one style is represented. And I think that if that's not your style, it can feel a little bit like you're doing something wrong or maybe that style is good and your style is bad. And I like that this shows a lot of different styles so that you can experiment and see what your style is and what kind of pen and ink drawings work for you. This is one of the pages that helped me the most where it shows different ways, different styles of drawing to draw a house. This is another page that shows that. So just some different options, line drawings versus drawing what's around the subject, kind of a mix of the two. I found that to be very helpful. Also, this page showing how different lines in the same kind of drawing can give different looks. This is another page that gives examples of drawing done completely with vertical lines, one doing in a free direction. This is showing the same house drawn in different ways as well. It is an incredibly helpful book if you're interested in pen and ink. He does have a book on rendering in pencil that I'll share as well. It's very similar, but it focuses just on the medium of pencil and graphite. But this book is uh, one of my, I think it's my favorite on pen and ink, and I do, do have a few books on pen and ink but this one definitely helped me the most. If there is a book that you would like for me to review from my library, I have a lot of books, then just leave a comment below and let me know. And if you like this video, take a minute to subscribe and in the down bar, you can find information on purchasing this book as well as where else to find me on the internet.